Hello everyone. So here I have the new Dell XPS 2-in-1. It's a 13-inch kind of hybrid tablet laptop. It's one of these that can bend backwards. So essentially you can place it in any way you like. And yeah, it's just basically like a half tablet, half laptop. It's uh, not too different from the original XPS 13. It's just uh, a little bit thinner. And um, even the styling and just kind of general design is about the same. Um, the webcam is also on the bottom, just like the original XPS 13. Now, some of the good things about this computer, essentially the build quality is absolutely fantastic. It feels very solid. There's very little flex. You can see maybe a tiny little bit of flex on the keyboard, but I am, I am pressing my finger down pretty hard. So in any normal typing, you won't notice anything. And um, also the design itself. I mean, this, this thing is sleek. I don't know if you can tell just how thin it is, but it is absolutely tiny. It, it, this is one of the tiniest laptops I've seen. I really like this kind of carbon fiber finish. It's the same as the original XPS, but feels very nice. Touchpad feels nice as well. Kind of like a smooth finish. Um, has no dedicated buttons, so it's kind of a click pad, which I'm not a fan of, but I mean, many of them are these days. And see these hinges? They seem like they're made out of metal, so yeah, it's pretty easy. And also, they are very stiff. So as you can see, you can kind of have the computer open at any level. So say, if I want to have it almost closed, it'll even stay like that. And this is a good sign. I, I hate laptops that when you bring the screen down to here, it just falls down. So the keyboard is good. The touchpad is good. And um, the sound is also absolutely exceptional. And uh, there have been a couple of these new laptops that are reviewed, especially starting from the Veo Pro 13, Veo Pro 13. Now these new laptops have really, really stepped up the sound quality compared to the same ones five years ago. I mean, five years ago, a laptop like this essentially barely made any noise at all. And um, currently I've had this computer only for two days and I actually don't even have the charger with me and it's dead. But uh, so I can't really demonstrate, but this, I mean, you can sit back 10 feet away and obviously the screen's a little small for that, but this computer will completely fill a full size room with sound. It's, it's very impressive for its size. And um, also same with the charger size. I, I'll include a photo of it, but it's a very small, very small little charger that uses the USB-C format. And both of the, this computer has two USB-C ports and uh, both of them can be used to charge the laptop. Um, other than that, the screen is also very nice. And uh, the blacks are very good. It's, it has good viewing angles and I can't currently turn this on for you because it's dead, but it is a very good screen. And um, overall, I really think that Dell pretty much has a slam dunk here. This really is a very, very sleek computer. I, I mean, I even brought it around the office and everyone who looked at it was like, wow, this, this thing is awesome. I, I want it. And uh, so at this point, it brings me to some of the cons. Um, a lot of these are actually somewhat subjective. So they're not kind of like on a traditional laptop where, you know, something just simply doesn't work or something is bad and that's a con. Um, I guess the first thing I wanted to point out is actually is the screen. I don't, I don't have it on right now, but it kind of has this issue that some of these new screens have where it doesn't auto dim, but what it does, uh, I, I'll, I'll demonstrate in a, in a link, but say you click on a dark background. So the entire screen slowly gets brighter or less bright based on what window you open. So for example, if you click on the start menu, the entire screen will very slowly over say three seconds become darker and then you click back on the background and there's Google Chrome or Google, which is white. And suddenly the laptop will become a change brightness very slowly, but it's kind of a step based change of brightness. So it's not instant. It just kind of goes in stages. And this is extremely frustrating in the eyes. I've tried to disable this. It's not under dimming or anything like that. And I have found that um, on certain computers, you actually need to do a registry edit to fix this feature. And I really don't know who came up with this feature because it literally makes my eyes bleed. So the screen issue, if it, I'm not hundred percent sure how to fix it, but if it can be fixed, the screen quality itself is absolutely perfect. But this gradual changing of brightness based on whatever you do is just, it literally just kills my eyes. I can't even, I can barely even use this computer at all, or it's just painful. Um, now, so moving on to the next kind of con, 
is this does have the i7Y version and uh, Intel is trying to mislead you by calling this the i7 where in fact it's actually the Core M which has now been relabeled to i7. So this is an ultra energy efficient processor. It's not very fast, but it's, it should be perfectly fine for doing anything like Word, browsing YouTube videos, or doing any light load. But on the other hand, if you, you try to do anything kind of heavy on this computer, or even say, for example, when I was installing Windows updates for 45 minutes, it first of all, it gets pretty hot. So the bottom of it got pretty hot, but it's really not that fast of a processor. It, it almost makes this computer feel like a kind of a beefy Android tablet. I mean, it's it's faster than an Android tablet, but it's, I mean, using a quad core i7 laptop, there's, there's no comparison at all. And um, touchpad wise, uh, this review unit actually has a completely, essentially non-functioning touchpad most of the time. So uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, I think this is just a flaw, so I, I won't really rate the computer poorly just on this. But overall, I, when the touchpad does work, I also found it to not work very well. For example, if you two finger scroll, now, now um, if you move both fingers, or, or you'd be doing this with one hand, I'm just showing with two hands. If you move both hands together, it scrolls up and down. But I've noticed if I put my hands at an angle, so like this, so say if I'm sitting at an angle to the laptop, on most computers, you can just scroll and it'll be fine. But with this, it didn't seem to scroll, so I had to have my fingers perfectly perpendicular to the touchpad for it to scroll. And I found this extremely uncomfortable as I tend to just sit in whatever angle I want and scroll up and down. I don't know if this is possibly due to the fact that this touchpad tends to stop working after about 10 minutes, but yeah, it's, I didn't really like it too much. And I also was not a big fan of the original Dell XPS 13 touchpad either. And um, one other issue is, um, I guess this is also more subjective is that this computer has no regular USB ports. It has two USB-C ports. Let's see if you can see this. So it has one USB port here, USB-C, a headphone jack, a Bluetooth search button, and micro, uh, micro SD card slot, another USB-C slot. I think that's a Kensington lock slot and the power button, which is pretty stiff and it's not really easy to press. But the way this laptop is made is essentially when you open the screen and touch anything, it will automatically turn on. So the power button is not nearly as useful. It's only really used if the computer is completely 100% off. So this really comes down to these USB-C ports. And, and I think that they could have fit a one regular USB port. And this, this really, to me, is a major drawback. Essentially, since there are only two, which means that if you're charging the laptop, one of them is being used up, which means now you can only have one. So if you have, say you have an adapter to, say for example, you have a, you're not using a Bluetooth mouse and you're using a USB or even USB-C dongle mouse. Now, when you're charging the computer, you have no USB ports. Now, for example, say you're charging the computer and you want to plug in a HDMI through an adapter. Now, you once again have no extra USB ports. So you either have to invest in a dock that has a USB, uh, HDMI and kind of all the ports, which makes the dock much bigger. And um, so yeah, th this is really kind of subjective as for some users, they might not even notice this at all, but uh, for any kind of serious user that tends to go places, plug in devices, projectors and travel, this, this computer is almost useless. I mean, if you get, forget your adapter at home, just forget doing anything. And I'm a person who likes to carry one computer that does everything and everything I need all in one package. The more things I have to carry, the more of a pain in the neck it is. So um, that's kind of what I was saying. Also, I, I've had only pretty much two days with this computer, but I was also not that impressed with the battery life. Just kind of, I installed all the Windows updates. It was at 100%. I brought it home, fiddled it with it for a little bit, played a few YouTube videos. I, mean, I literally barely even used the computer. I mean, it, it just kind of sat at idle most of the time. So it, it literally used no CPU power. And by the end of this, I think it was at like 54%. And this was, I took it home at work from work at 6 p.m. fully charged. And by 9 p.m. being asleep most of the time, the computer somehow managed to get to just above 50% battery life. And uh, this is a little worrisome. Uh, I mean, this is, has a core Y processor. It's supposed to be extra energy efficient. But what it really seems like to me is that 
if the processor is pushed or used in any way, it's not really that efficient. And this laptop is so thin that the laptop, uh, the battery is also very small. So if you're just kind of sitting and writing a Word document or something extremely light, I think the battery could last a decent amount of time, but I honestly can't see the battery life on this lasting more than five, six hours if you're actually just using it continuously. And that's pretty low. I mean, this is a new age ultrabook that is kind of difficult to charge. It, it's supposed to be on the go. And in my brief experience, I, I really the, the battery life really did not live up to how it should be. And uh, when you compare this to an XPS 13, it's almost the same size. I mean, the XPS 13 is something like less than one millimeter or a millimeter thicker at one edge. But then since it's tapered as it gets to the front, the XPS 13 is basically just as thick. And um, yeah, I know, I just, it's just not good. Uh, I have a Z-book, HP ZBook 17, which is a massive workstation and it's not even supposed to get good battery life. But if I put it on medium brightness and I have the NVIDIA GPU disabled with the quad core i7, I, I, I can easily get five hours of battery life out of that thing. And just a brief amount of time I had this laying in my desk and I kind of played around with it. I feel like my ZBook 17 would have even had more battery life after doing the exact same thing. So overall, I just want to say this computer is super sleek, super stylish, very thin. It looks great. It feels great. I mean, it's not the lightest offering, obviously, but um, I mean, it is made of metal. So if you went with something like a Sony or no longer Sony, a Vio S or something of that style, it would obviously weigh much less because it's made of carbon fiber. But if this touchpad issue is just an uh, isolated issue that I had, I really think this computer is kind of a slam dunk as long as the USB ports don't bother you. On the other hand, I, I, I would never buy something like this for myself. I just, I just can't deal with the hassle of having adapters and just, just dealing with dongles and annoying cables. This is simply not for me. If it just had one USB port, it could easily alleviate a lot of these issues and just make life a lot easier.